Three minutes after 10 is the time. A very good morning to you. I have no control over topic selection during the month of December, of course. I just open up my advent calendar and follow whatever I am instructed to do by the powers that, that be. Um, and today it is, it is Brexit. It's a response to reports from the um, British Chambers of Commerce that... I think two thirds, is it, of businesses report that the trade deal is failing to help. More than three quarters, indeed, of companies report that this deal signed by Boris Johnson and David Frost does absolutely nothing to uh, increase their sales or grow their business. In many cases, quite the opposite. We'll, we'll get on to that shortly. Book your place now. I just want to know very simply, how has it affected you? Whether you're a sole trader, whether you're a musician touring Europe, or whether you're, you, you used to export, because they're doing it again. And I... I we might talk about the deep, deeper issues as well regarding this, because it is a, you know, it's an epochal issue. It's, it's a generation defining political issue. The people who told you it was going to be brilliant don't want to talk about it anymore. And in many ways, the people who told you it was going to be awful don't really want to talk about it anymore either, but for, for, for reasons that are probably obvious. But just in case they're not, I'll, I'll explain. Who likes to hear it? If, you, if you've been proved right by events... You still have to live with the consequences of the people who've been proved wrong's decision. You know, I, I, I could sit here now thinking of LBC colleagues who encouraged you to vote for Brexit. They don't want to talk about it anymore. And you can see why. I don't really want to talk about it anymore because all you're doing is cataloguing the catastrophe that's been inflicted upon the country by people who claim they knew better than the experts. People who thought Nigel Farage was a more trusted agent than the governor of the Bank of England or who thought that they could perhaps lean on Jacob Rees-Mogg more than they could lean on... The, uh, the, the assembled um, academics of this country. It's, 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 it's horrible. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, close to, uh, it's close to surreal, isn't it? But the way to focus, the way to remember, the way to address this very simple reality is to, is to remember that you cannot fix problems until you admit, until you acknowledge them, and you cannot acknowledge them until you understand them. If, you, if, if your house was on fire, or even if it had a leak, you know, let's, let's just call it a leak, even if it had a bad leak, how on earth are you going to fix the leak if the plumber is telling you or the estate agent is telling you that there's no leak? So you've got water dripping through your sitting room ceiling and the estate agent comes round and says, oh, no, that's a Brexit benefit. That's, that's wonderful. That is, that is, those are British drips. And therefore, you should be happy with your British drips. I, mean, I, I, I struggle sometimes to find the analogies that are cutting enough to actually reflect the reality. Oh, no, no, no. I re did it the other day on Question Time. You've got a bloke who's been a wine trader for 30 years, describing how his business has been wrapped in red tape as a consequence of something that people voted for on a promise from people like re that red tape would be reduced. So a wine trader on, on national television says to the, to the mewling pencil, my business has been absolutely kebabbed, and re tells him that it hasn't. How does that work? How do we allow that to happen? There's some egregious examples of dishonesty in the House of Commons, but this is on a different level. This is almost like a, a conspiracy of corrupted reality. 30 years in the wine trade, this is what's happened as a direct consequence of what you've done. And, and he, he, he sits there drawling, oh, no, it hasn't, like the most ridiculous pantomime villain in history. It's hit my business hard. We, we know people, another wine trader, Daniel Lambert, who speaks to us quite a lot, has had to move to France. The cheese exporters had to sell his business. Simon Spurrell from the Cheshire, Cheshire Cheese Company. These are the people that talked us through it, told us what was going to happen. Um, had to sell his business to a company that has a hub in Europe. That's jobs and tax going to continental Europe. And yet we all still sit here. The liars who sold it are still lying. And the mugs who fell for it are pleading with you not to talk about it. It's quite surreal. In fact, I, you know, I would quite like to talk about the broader, almost the philosophical or the psychological issues that are going on here. The benefits. You know, Rees Mogg was made Minister of Benefits. I still don't know whether that was a joke or not. He came up with something about the Dartford Tunnel and the signage. It's literally, Rachel Venable said to him, with a microphone in her hand, stuck it under his gob, and said... What, what, can, have you found any benefits yet? And he said something about the signage in the Dartford Tunnel. 
being uh, r- sort of clumsy numbers displayed in meters because you weren't allowed. I, I forget the precise detail of it, but I know for a fact that he misunderstood entirely why the signage in the Dartford Tunnel had been written in the way that it had and that it had absolutely nothing to do with membership of the European Union. So the bloke is drawing a ministerial salary to come up with benefits and the benefit he comes up with, if it were true, would be pathetic, but wasn't even true. So what is the word for something that would be pathetic if it was true, but wasn't even true anyway? You need a word that expresses even more ridiculousness than the word pathetic. I don't know what that word would be. Brexit, possibly. It's like the ultimate Brexity intervention. Here's a benefit. Oh, it's not true, by the way. I don't know whether Jacob Rees-Mogg is too stupid to understand that it's not true or too dishonest to admit it, or possibly somehow both. But that's the only benefit I've got. And he's done it again with fish, inevitably. He's done it again with fish, a claim that the new quota negotiations with the European Union um, are somehow a Brexit benefit, overlooking two crucial points. The, uh, the quotas being fished by everybody else in the European Union have also gone up, and we can't sell our fish frictionlessly into our previously big, biggest market. So we're now able to fish, to catch more fish with a tight... I'll tell you, actually, the details on this because there was, a, I think, an SNP member of Parliament yesterday who nailed it in the House of Commons. Um, fish that we can't sell. MP for Central Ayrshire. I don't actually know what party she is. Uh, she must be the SNP, mustn't she? Um, I'll, I'll play you what she said yesterday. This is after the Telegraph reported. No one else has touched the story. 30,000 tonne increase in a Brexit bonus when the EU quota was increased to 350,000 tonnes. So it, it, it's a surreal scenario in which we find ourselves where the liars continue to lie and the prominent people in the media mostly or in the pub, if you prefer, don't want you to talk about it anymore. Could you imagine... If in 1967, England fans had demanded that we stop talking about winning the World Cup. Or if in 1947, uh, people had said, oh, I think we should stop talking about winning the war now. I think we should, I don't know, we don't want to talk about our, our glorious victory. This is the bit that strikes me as funniest. Oh, well, no, we don't want to talk about that anymore. It, it was a glorious victory. You know, some people wanted to have parades in the street. Some sort of gammon and pineapple party members became human party poppers on the night of that result being posted. All of these wonderful celebrations have now turned into demands that we stop talking about it. Why would you want to stop talking about it? Why would you want to stop talking about a glorious victory? Why in 1967 would England fans have wanted to stop talking about the World Cup? Or even this year, stop talking about the Lionesses' victory in the Euros. Why would that be? Could you imagine that? If Sports Personality of the Year last night had sought to excise from the record the fact that the women's footballers won the European Championships earlier this year? Oh, no, we don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about our glorious victory anymore. And what are the, what are the worst examples of Brexitism doing now? Obsessing about refugees. Obsessing about... Desperate people in small boats, not even pausing to draw breath when four of them drowned to death in the English Channel. Let's carry on the attacks. Let's carry on punting crud about Rwanda. It's quite, quite bizarre. We live in a country that has been utterly corrupted by a a, a refusal to recognise reality. And on it goes. 12 minutes after 10 is the time. On it goes. (laughs) 